My name is Paul Grundy. I'm the author of JW Facts, and here is my story. I was raised a Jehovah's Witness by loving parents. My grandmothers were witnesses, as was my auntie and many of my cousins. After I left home, my father became a circuit overseer for 20 years, and my sister and her husband served in Bethel before they had children. I grew up in a congregation in Tasmania where many of the older witnesses expressed the strictly fundamental viewpoint that Jehovah directed the organisation and very shortly he was going to destroy anyone who is not a Jehovah's Witness. As promoted in the Watchtower, I thought I was never going to die. In fact, I didn't even think I was going to get through school. However, Armageddon had not come by the time I matriculated and unusually for witnesses in the 1980s, my parents allowed me to get a university education. I felt I was able to justify this because whilst I was going to university, I was also regular pioneering. My parents converted from Catholicism in 1973 after studying with governing body member Jeff Jackson's father-in-law, Frank Alcock. Frank also studied with me when I was a teenager I came to know Jeff Jackson on a personal basis. Frank was very intellectual and so we studied the deeper doctrine of the Watchtower. As a teenager, rather than enjoying novels, I would spend my time reading books such as Babylon the Great Has Fallen, God's Kingdom Rules. They were different times back then. Now, most followers have very little more than a superficial knowledge of Watchtower doctrine. Being gregarious, I came to know over a thousand witnesses personally. What always bothered me about this was that many of these witnesses were doing shocking things and many worldly people that I met seemed to be very nice. I could not reconcile why God was going to kill billions of these worldly people and save Jehovah's Witnesses simply for a label. The worldly people generally knew nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses or even just the barest minimum. So how could they be judged as evil rejectors of Jehovah? It was my time at Bethel that convinced me that the Watchtower Society does not have Jehovah's direction. In 1994, a Bethelite friend of mine was appointed as an elder whilst he was committing adultery. It was later discovered that he'd been committing adultery for seven years. In fact, he even brought the woman into Bethel one night when his wife went to the meeting. This proved to me that God's Holy Spirit is not involved in directing the organization, or at least congregational appointments. Though weakening my faith, I did not know enough about Watchtower history or alternate doctrinal viewpoints to know whether the Watchtower was at least the closest thing to the truth. I was too afraid to find out. Afraid that if I read anything that was not from the Watchtower, I'd be influenced by apostates. Afraid that I might be wrong and die at Armageddon. Afraid of being shunned by my family and my friends. And very afraid of entering the evil world, knowing no one and believing that everyone is evil and it's a depressing place to live. In 1994, I left Bethel feeling that the Watchtower may not contain the truth. I started to wonder what would happen to the organisation in 20 years when the last of the 1914 generation had died, but an Armageddon still had not come. I could not imagine the Watchtower shutting up shop and saying, well, we were wrong, the last of the generation have died. So I expected that a new generation teaching was going to have to be formulated. Well, despite predicting this change, I was in shock when just a year later in 1995, a new generation teaching did in fact come out and one that got rid of any reliance on a date prediction. Distancing itself from the time-specific generation prophetic interpretation so much earlier than I had expected proved to me that the governing body did not have faith that Armageddon is close. Despite knowing that Holy Spirit doesn't direct Jehovah's organization and losing trust in the doctrine, the fear of loss and loneliness was so strong that I could not leave my cultural background, my family or my friends. And this drove me to continue attending meetings for a further 10 years. However, the constant derogatory statements about how evil the world and worldly people are 
started to really irritate me and I began to miss more and more meetings until by 2004 I was inactive and really could see no point in life itself. In 2004, the elders began to pressure me to reactivate myself, wanting to know what was my problem. I told them that I had little faith, so they told me that I needed to prove the truth to myself by studying more. Little did they realise that I knew more about Watchtower Doctrine than most people do. And yet, what they told me triggered something in my mind, because I realised I only knew Watchtower Doctrine I had not really studied alternative points of view and I really owed it to myself to prove whether Watchtower Doctrine really was trustworthy and really was the truth. I needed to confirm what the Watchtower presents is accurate and why other people could believe things so different than what Jehovah's Witnesses did. I decided the uh, logical place to start was with the reasoning book because that has a whole range of different topics in alphabetical order. So I quite literally started from A, the first topic beginning with A, which I think was abortion, and then worked my way through the book to research each topic from numerous different sources. On the 26th of December 2004, a devastating tsunami resulted in the death of over 200,000 people. I was overcome by fear, as Jehovah's Witnesses can commonly are whenever there's an earthquake, that maybe Armageddon was about to occur. Then I received a text message from a friend of mine stating not to be afraid and that a tsunami had killed a similar amount of people in a similar location in 1737. This became one of the first topics that I started to research with the information found at my article on earthquakes. I cannot express how absolutely in shock I was and how much anger I felt at learning just how deceptive the Watchtower is. As the so-called 20 times increase in earthquakes in our day was what was one of the underpinning foundations of my faith. I felt that this was scientific evidence that we are living in the last days and to find that there has not been any more earthquakes in the last um, well, thousands of years and this was just an absolute deceptive lie on the part of the watchtower to manipulate people absolutely destroyed me. Before this moment, I could justify that the governing body may not be directed by Holy Spirit, but they directed the most genuine, loving, honest religion on earth, the one that was closest to the truth. Now I came to realise that Watchtower will lie to support its doctrine and that the religion uses coercive persuasion to manipulate and control its members. The next few months I became consumed by research. Most witnesses will question the validity of at least some Watchtower doctrine, but as they cannot openly question any Watchtower doctrine, cognitive dissonance takes over. I had spent my entire life suppressing contrary thoughts and regurgitating Watchtower prescribed beliefs to finally be able to evaluate information rather than blindly input the information was quite literally mind-blowing. Freedom of the mind and freedom from mind control is vitally important to people. I stopped attending meetings in early 2005 and attempted to slip out or, as I now know it's called, fade out. I'd like to say that the shock and disappointment with the Watchtower was well compensated for by the amazement I felt at finally being able to think and learn. Except the emotional toll was so strong it was almost too much to bear and leaving was just incredibly emotionally difficult. I went through post-traumatic shock, becoming very emotional and finding it very difficult to concentrate, and I ended up losing my job in the process and experiencing two very difficult years financially. I continued to devote myself to researching Watchtower Doctrine in an effort to prove to myself that I wasn't being blinded by Satan or misled by my own desires and sinful ulterior motives. The more research I did, the angrier I became and determined to help my family see that the Watchtower was not the truth and see through the manipulation and falsehood. I did not understand at the time the power of mind control and rather than assist them, all I did was create alienation and resentment that to this day I have not been able to change. 
I started to locate and find out about all my childhood friends. As I'd left the state that I was brought up in and I had travelled through different congregations. I found that of 40 people that I grew up with, over half were disfellowshipped. Some had barely been contacted by their parents for almost 40 years. Others were racked by fear of Armageddon. Others had sadly committed suicide. An examination of Watchtower Publisher Records identifies that witnesses have one of the highest turnover rates of any religion, which means that there are hundreds of thousands adversely affected by this religion and who are actively being shunned today by their families. Other statistics show that the divorce rate amongst Jehovah's Witnesses is the same as the population high, that they have the lowest levels of education and the lowest income levels of any established religion in developed countries. I also hope to one day be able to do some research into the effect that um, cults have on suicide rates. As I know just from the number of witnesses that were friends of mine that committed suicide, that anecdotally it far outweighs the um, suicide rate of the developed world. I post the JW facts wanting to assist people find objective and factual information in an easy to follow format in the hope that helping other witnesses avoid the confusion I had felt for 10 years prior to leaving would help them be able to move on with their lives. I found that many that leave who do not do the research do not ever get over their ingrained guilt and fear that results from being a witness. I also want to help Bible studies get a a secondary opinion of what the Watchtower is teaching so they can make an informed decision before joining such religion. So I think it's important to have both sides of a story before baptism. It was difficult teaching myself to present the information in an objective manner without letting the emotional side creep in. However, I feel for the site to be the most effective, the information I presented has to be completely accurate and honest. And I always welcome people who send me any information that may indicate I've made an error somewhere. Originally, jwfacts.com was anonymous. But about six months after my leaving and my last meeting and the site going live, the elders found out about it and traced it back to me. They arrived one night at my doorstep and announced that a judicial committee was being formed. I wrote a letter requesting that instead of being disfellowshipped, I should have my baptism annulled. As a minor, I really wasn't in a position to make a lifetime commitment to an organisation with such important ramifications. They refused to accept my reasoning and went ahead and formed the Judicial Committee. This meeting was traumatic and eye-opening. In my request for annulment were a number of points outlining why I could not accept Jehovah's Witnesses were the truth. But throughout the meeting, the elders refused to discuss a single point. It became apparent they didn't care if I even believed in the Bible or if I believed in God. There was just one question that I had to answer, and that was, did I believe that the Watchtower Society was Jehovah's organisation? It was announced shortly after this meeting that I was no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, the next six months became even more emotionally traumatic. Overnight, I was cut off from my family and my network of friends. Yet at the same time, I experienced an incredible high. I was 36, and for the first time, I felt really alive, free. I had not understood how depressed I had been as a witness for many years. I could now see the beauty in the world around me, and also the beauty in worldly people. I now felt connected, rather than being just an observer. I was free from the perpetual negativity that the Watchtower instills with its need to reconcile everything as the evil last days filled with evil people that God must destroy. However, I could not overcome the deep hurt of losing my family or stop my mind constantly replaying what could I do to change things. The only way I was able to control my thinking was to spend time with a cognitive behavioural therapist which I absolutely recommend to anyone in a similar situation because it really does teach you to learn how to think positively and has made a dramatic effect on my life. 
One of the hardest things I've come to accept is that a Jehovah's Witness parent or a sibling will put the organization above their family. There are few exceptions to this rule. Witness parents are convinced that by shunning their own family, it is for your benefit and that it will bring you back to Jehovah, which really is little more than emotional blackmail. They are also convinced that shunning you is a requirement for themselves to get everlasting life. But it goes much deeper than that. You are confronting their belief system, and that is more precious than family. Well, certainly it was more precious than I am. Another difficulty with leaving was that I realized that I could not trust any of my beliefs. Virtually everything I believed had been dictated to me since birth. In my research, I'd come to understand the way Watchtower presents fallacious logic to manipulate the conclusion of the readers. It became necessary for me to learn how to evaluate information initially and then over time reevaluate every single belief, moral and ideal that I had. Over the years, friends from the past have made contact as they too came to realize that Watchtower doctrine is based on untruths and fallacies. With the passing of the 100 year anniversary of Jesus' invisible 1914 reign, a hundred years of lies at the end is just a few years away, more are coming to the conclusion that the Watchtower Doctrine cannot be trusted. I look particularly forward to my niece and nephew coming to the realization that it is not the truth so that I can get to know them and also to be there to support them when their parents are no longer permitted to. During the years that I was questioning things, I had no desire to have any children in this world. At the age of 38, two years after being disfellowshipped, I had my first child, Zach. Welcoming a son into the world and watching him change daily has just been the absolutely greatest joy of my life. I love him for himself and could not be more proud of how he's turning out every single day. It is so different to the manipulative way that I was brought up, only being considered a success if I shared the same beliefs as other people. I am strongly against any religion that manipulates its members and look forward to a time when atrocities done in the name of religion end, whether they be in the form of terrorist acts, religious wars, violence, shunning of family members, allowing family members to die refusing medical treatment, or just the control of beliefs and emotions through fear and guilt. I'm optimistic for the minimization of injustice in the name of religion through education, seeing the internet as the tool to increase availability of education over the coming decades. That is why I'm so passionate about jwfacts.com and hope that we can use the internet to put an end to religious groups that use fear and guilt to manipulate their members, particularly those ones that split up families.